Good morning. We want to take the next few minutes to meditate on God's Word. Our passage this morning is 1 Timothy 1, 15 and 16. And our focus on this passage is to remember the saving grace of Jesus and to be reminded of the sin from which we were saved. Let's pray and then we'll read together 1 Timothy 1, 15 and 16. Father, we are grateful to be redeemed by your saving grace. We know that if left to ourselves, we would not have chosen you and would be absolutely powerless over our sin. You have given us your word as a guide so that we might be sanctified in our walk with you. You have also given us your Holy Spirit to empower us to understand your ways and to desire to be obedient. We are overjoyed by knowing that you will never leave us or forsake us and that your loving kindness will be with us forever, forever. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's read together 1 Timothy 1, 15 and 16. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am foremost of all. For this reason, I found mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. This is the first two letters written by Paul to Timothy. After Paul's first imprisonment, he revisited several cities in which he ministered, including Ephesus. 1 Timothy is a practical letter from Paul which contains pastoral instructions for Timothy. The letter contains several theological truths, including the doctrine of salvation. And this morning we will be looking briefly at God's saving grace and how it relates to sin. Let's look at the first part of verse 15. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance. There are two descriptions listed to help define the word statement. One is trustworthy and the other is deserving full acceptance. Trustworthy is a descriptive word that means faithful. It is a faithful statement. In other words, it is believable. It is true. The second descriptive term is deserving full acceptance, which means worthy of all acceptance. What is the statement that is being described? That Jesus, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. We know from the text that this is a faithful, believable, and true statement worthy to be accepted by all. I want to spend most of our time looking at the last statement in verse 15. Among whom I am foremost of all. Paul is saying that as a sinner, he is foremost of all. He is saying that he is the chief of sinners, first in rank or best of all sinners. The word best here actually implies the worst of all sinners. How can Paul, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, say this? There are two reasons that come to mind. The first reason is listed in verse 13. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor, Paul recalls who he was prior to his conversion. He knows, he knows who he was before Christ. He remembers his former ways before grace invaded his world. He remembers his blasphemous, slanderous, Christ-hating, Christian-persecuting background. The second reason that Paul can say that he is the worst of all sinners is because his focus is on his own heart. He is not trying to compare himself to every other sinner who ever lived. Paul knows his heart. He is very aware of his sin as simply, and simply saying, that only he and God knows what goes on in his heart. It is kind of like Paul saying, what I have seen in my own heart 
is more proud, more selfish, and self-exalting, and more rebellious against God than anything I've seen in the heart of anyone else. Paul is saying, the biggest sinner I know is me. What can we conclude from this? Paul knew the sin that his own heart was capable of. He knew his thoughts, his intentions, and even his judgment of others. Paul is no different than you, than you or I. As believers, we desire to walk with God, but we are also we. We also need to be aware of and recognize that our hearts are still sinful. Our hearts are always battling and waging war with selfish desires, judgments of others, deception, and misplaced worship. We even deceive ourselves concerning who we really are. Now let's look at verse 16. Yet for this reason I found mercy so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. In the first part of verse 15, we have the gospel message of Christ coming to save sinners. And at the end of verse 15, Paul reports the status of his sinful heart. Verse 16 is a summary of Paul's testimony describing that even to the worst of sinners, Christ demonstrated his perfect patience. Paul, a blasphemer, church persecutor, and aggressive and aggressor against Christians, was granted salvation. This is a statement that, that says God can save even the foremost of sinners. And Paul used his example to magnify the glory of his Savior. So what would happen if we would consider ourselves as the foremost of all sinners? How would this change the relationship we have with our spouse, with our children, with our parents, with other believers? Can you humbly put yourself in the place, in that place where you know that your sin is much worse than the others. If you compare your sinfulness to the holiness of God and the fact that He saved you, your gratitude should increase greatly for having received His saving grace. We know as we walk in His sanctifying power that we are painfully prone to sin, yet we can rejoice because through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have power over sin. Charles Spurgeon says, Too many think lightly of sin and therefore think lightly of the Savior. He who has stood before his God, convicted and condemned with the rope about his neck, is the man to weep for joy when he is pardoned, to hate the evil which has been forgiven him, and to live to the honor of the Redeemer by whose blood he has been cleansed. If you're listening to this message this morning and do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we pray that you would have eyes to see and ears to hear the good news. Understand that God created you. He knows all about you. He knows your struggles. He knows your sin. The book of Hebrews tells us there is no creature hidden from His sight. Yes, He even knows your deepest secrets. Everyone will stand before Jesus one day. Those who acknowledge Jesus as their Lord and Savior will be declared holy and blameless before Him and will spend eternity with Him in heaven. Those who reject Him and do not know Jesus will be judged, convicted, and condemned with no hope but face eternity in hell forever and ever. There is only one way to be pardoned, and that is through the redeeming blood of Jesus. Please consider Jesus today. Repent and believe. If you have questions about what it takes to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I beg you to reach out to any one of the elders at Grace Bible Church. We would love to talk with you and help you comprehend the gospel. 
and best, the best news, and, and to give you the best news that anyone could ever hear. Let today be the day of your salvation.